Hey everyone, this is Structural Steve again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to place your beam layout, otherwise known as the framing plan, in OpenBridge Modeler. And I'll cover laying out both curb steel and corded concrete girder framing plans in this video. So to start off with, we're going to do what we always do for a new modeling step, and that's make sure that the unit we want to work in is the active unit. So I'm going to go over to my Explorer here. And right now I have the last unit activated, but I want to work in the first, actually the first unit here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and set active. Once that's verified, then we're going to go ahead and click on the beam layout tool. Select the first support line that I want to set this framing plan for and the last one. And then left click to accept. Now this first span here is just a simple span, so I'm going to make sure my placement method is set to simple. And I'm going to go ahead and update my number of beams here. Hit enter. And since I'm on a curved alignment, I can't really take advantage of this edge distance uh, tool here. But any of these tools here in the quick, what I call the quick section here that you can use, I would recommend using them because it'll save you time down the road. Now that I have the correct number of beams in my table, I'm going to go ahead and start updating the input values. I'll start off by changing the first and last beam names to their beam numbers. Now for this first span, we have uh, pre-stressed concrete girders laid out on a curved alignment. And the default spacing method for the exterior girders is set to edge of deck. As you can see here, left edge of deck and right deck edge. Now this gets a little convoluted on a curved alignment since those will be awkward values and not uniform. So for these cases, I like to use what I call the long cord spacing method. What this does is draw a line from the point of intersection between the start pier line in alignment and the end pier line in alignment. And then the beams, the beam lines are then spaced referencing this line, uh, parallel to that line. So this literally lets you maximize your beam lengths on that horizontal curve as well. So I'll go ahead and change all these spacing methods here to long cord. I'm going to do this for all the beams since I'm doing it for the first one as well. Now that I have my spacing method updated on my beams, I'll go ahead and input all my beam spacings relative to that long cord. And just one thing to note for the sign convention here, negative is going to be to the left of that long cord and positive is going to be to the right of that long cord and you're always looking up station. Now that I have all my beam spacings in there, the only other variable I really have to worry about here is the start line offset. And this start line offset is just the beam end offset distance from the support line to the end of the beam. Now these values will be different at the beginning and the end, so I'll have to uncheck the same beam uh, start end value box here to kind of free up that information on this side over here. So I'll go ahead and put those information there now. And I like to do that up here because that'll filter through and apply it to all the beam lines down here. And I'm sitting enter after I enter that data in there. Again, negative number because I'm going backwards from that support line on the end of the span. So that's it for this span, but let's go ahead and cover a few things in this window that we didn't really necessarily need for this particular span. First one's going to be the advanced bearing definition checkbox here. And what this is going to do is allow you to add multiple bearings under each girder or individual girders if you need to. So for like a you know, concrete U-beam, you might have two bearings under there. This is going to be where you would do that. And it also allows you to specify a transverse and longitudinal offset distance for each individual bearing, instead of having a uniform bearing line offset distance, you can actually offset the individual bearings here in either direction. Now these values here will override whatever values we're gonna be input in the bearing tool up here. So these will take precedence, whatever you put in here will override that default bearing tool. If for some reason your framing plan follows a separate alignment or references a different alignment, then you can go ahead and select that up here. If you want your, your beam lines or your beam paths to actually follow individual or unique auxiliary alignments, 
then you can go ahead and add those here and select those once you add those and then change your spacing method uh, down here. I'm sorry, over here to auxiliary alignment. And then you can actually select the auxiliary alignment that you want that particular beam line to follow. And if your framing plan is similar on multiple spans, you can always use a section over here and knock them all out the same by clicking that set to all to default and choosing the default span you want here. So that about covers it for this particular dialog window. And I'll go ahead and hit validate here. And what this is going to do is make sure that my, my beam layout is, you know, valid and there's no errors that they found. And you also see a, a 2D preview of it here. And you also notice if you zoom in here that they'll show you some dimensions here. So you'll get to see your, your beam spacings here and, you know, your overhang distances at the beginning and the ends of the bridges. And one thing they are going to be adding in uh, an upcoming release is the ability to see what your min and max overhangs are for left and right side, you know, all along the, the span here. So if we got a max overhang over here, we don't see that right now, but in, in the future here, they're going to be reporting all these values, min, max overhangs over here. So we can really lay out our, our beam layout, you know, hundred percent in OBM here in, in the framing plan, as opposed to trying to do it in, in 2d ahead of time, and then kind of bringing that information over here. So that's it, you know, everything looks good in this one. I'm gonna go ahead and cl click save. And we see the beam layouts in there, it looks good. We have it in, in 2D down here as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next unit. So this next unit is a, a two-span continuous, you know, steel girder bridge. So when I use my beam layout tool, I'm gonna go ahead and select the first one here. And then the third line here, because these are continuous girders. And I'm gonna change my method to continuous here. Update my number of beams to four. And these ones do have uniform edge distances. They're both six foot on each side, so I can go ahead and put six in there and hit apply. And the kind of neat thing about that is it automatically puts all the beam spacings and adjusts them for you in here. So that's it, I'm done. Yeah, that's how quick it was to do this, the steel girder portion. I do have uh, start line offsets that are different, so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this box, put in 12 inches for the start, because I have a foot offset from the center line of the pier, and negative 12 inches, and go ahead and validate. Move this over, take a peek, and yep, that looks good. Go ahead and save. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the last span, last span here, last unit. And it's gonna be the same thing I was doing on the first unit here. All right, this looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and validate it, make sure that that frame plan doesn't have any errors. Again, scoot it over, make sure those all look good. Beam spacings look good. Overhangs, everything looks good. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And that's it. And you should have a good understanding at this point of the different ways in which you can lay out that beam layout for you know, pre-stress concrete girder bridge or steel girder bridge. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button you see on your screen now. Give the video a like and share it with others. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section and I'll do my best to respond to them. See you guys in the next video.